Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm taking a first impressions look at Faces of War, a European developed World War II RTS that uh, is one of the many 1C games being released on Steam lately. So I thought, hey, let's take a look. I like RTS, and it's been quite a while since World War II was popular, so it's a little refreshing to go back and look at now instead of just a modern military setting. Um, who do we want to start? You know, let's go with Soviet. Not a lot of games you play as Soviets during World War II. I guess we got to do our tutorial first. I've never been mad about military decorations, but now I'm quite pleased after being awarded the Medal of Valor at Korsen Shevchenkovsky. It's because of that medal that I made it here to the Special Forces Training Camp. Major Mirokin says a single soldier trained by him is worth an entire tank company. Today, it's time for me to prove he was not mistaken and to do the best I can during this test. From the sounds of uh, the description of this game, it kind of makes it sound like maybe it's a, a smaller focused RTS. You know, instead of a big army you're controlling, kind of a squad of dudes and maybe a tank or two instead of a huge mob. Welcome to the special task unit, men. Each of you has been described as a perfect soldier, ready to fulfill his duty. That's why you're here. Prove your worth, and remember that your fate depends on the results of this test. Your mission is to get to the railway station and destroy all the targets along the way. I'll be waiting for you at the final gathering point. This is all you need to know. Get going on your mission, and good luck. Look around you and study the terrain. Use the mouse wheel to zoom the camera in or out. To rotate the camera, hold the middle mouse button down. Your own units are shown in blue on the mini-map. Neutral ones are yellow, allied ones are green, and enemy ones are red. I was going to say, maybe it should have waited until I had the interface to say that. Alright, so we can zoom in and out. Uh, I can't scroll camera with the facade. Alright, so these are our guys, I guess. Or our, our, our guy. Any of them. Follow the path to get to the river. Select your soldier by left-clicking on him. You can always center the camera on the selected soldier by pressing the C key. After that, click where you want to send him. Double-clicking makes the soldier run fast. Now, order your soldier to move towards the river. So yeah, it seems like we're... direct control to operate a unit. To do so, Hold down the control key or just press the end key. In this mode, use the arrow keys to move and the mouse to aim and shoot. Wait, it said direct control, didn't it? Da, commander. But yeah, it looks like we're controlling, you know, straight up individual guys instead of one unit being a whole bunch of guys like Company of Heroes. Almost every object can be used as cover. Using cover smartly may increase your soldiers' lives considerably. For example, you can use a rock or a building as protection against bullets, or use tall grass or bushes to hide from an enemy patrol. To take cover, Position the mouse cursor over an object and Got that click already. on the symbol characterizing the cover. Go up to a boat on the bank and try to take cover behind it. Good! If your soldier has taken cover during combat, he is relatively safe. Now, you need to cross this river. To cross the river, left-click on the water. Double-clicking will make the soldier swim faster. Now, get to a Man. deserted boat station on the other bank. An RTS for units can swim. Good, the water's warm today. I like how they yell in Russian when you tell them to do stuff, but they just straight up sound not even attempting to sound Russian when they talk. That's great. Now you're on boat station territory, but the gates are locked from the inside. Notice that the mission description has appeared in your notebook. 
You can look inside it by pressing the O key or by clicking on the notebook icon beneath the minimap. Now, make the soldier move to the gate. Look, there's a hole to the left of the gate. You can crawl in and open the gates from the other side. To crawl, click on the icon on the right or click where you want to send your soldier and he'll crawl there. There are three basic postures a soldier can stand. This actually seems more like uh down. You can shift between them by clicking on the, the icon. The newer Jagged the Alliance game. games. This will also make the unit run, bend, or crawl respectively. Okay, you're inside. Now, open the gates for the other members of the group. To do so, position the mouse cursor over the gates. A lock icon will appear. And click on them. Congratulations, you've accomplished your first mission. Go to the shooting range. To do so, position the mouse cursor over the ladder, standing upright nearby, an arrow icon will appear, and click on it. So yeah, it's not really an RTS. Well, I mean, it's still technically an RTS. It is real time. It doesn't go into slow mo or anything. In order to get to the shooting range, you need to jump over this wooden fence. To do so, position the mouse cursor over it and orange it. Now it's time for some shooting. Take the weapon. It's in the box near you. Take a click on the item in the inventory screen. Then, holding down the left mouse button, drag the submachine gun and the cartridges from the box into your backpack. It's empty now. This can also be done by right-clicking or left double-clicking on the item. You can also take and transfer all the items at once. All right, so we've straight up got an inventory arrow. for our soldiers. So yeah, this is more of a uh, always be viewed a squad-based strategy than a full real-time strategy. Portrait, or by pressing the I key. Good. Now, take and load the submachine gun by double-clicking on it. You can also load the weapon by selecting it and pressing the plus key. The minus key unloads the weapon. After that, take your position in the firing line. Your group's mission is to hit all the targets. To fire at a target, aim the weapon at the target, a sight icon will appear, and click on it. Remember that shooting from behind cover is most efficient, since the soldier is less vulnerable to enemy fire and is able to support his weapon, which considerably improves his accuracy. Now, hit all the targets. I was gonna say, where are the targets? I don't actually see any targets. Are they all the way over here? Is that where I'm supposed to be? <laughs> oh, they're over here. I was looking the wrong way. Firing this uh, SMG on full automatic probably isn't the best way to hit these long range targets, and I think I used all our bullets. Reloading is not working the same. Oh, did I do it this time? Alright, I think I did it. Everyone's waiting on me. Not bad. Submachine gun bullets have sufficient killing power. In combat, a submachine gun is efficient at short to medium distances, and it's the major weapon used by assault infantry units. Now, inspect the remaining boxes. Alright, I guess we'll use our LMG this time. I don't know if that counts as an LMG or it's just an MG back then. Take your position in the firing line and use a machine gun to hit the targets. This weapon is highly efficient at almost any distance and is used by the heavy weapons infantry.
That's great. Take a look around you. That's great. There should be a number of sniper rifles for you. To highlight the items lying on the ground, press the tab key or click on an icon to the right of your character. All right, to pick up an tab. item from the ground, position the mouse cursor over the item, a hand icon will appear. And I was going to say, none it. of those are sniper now, rifles. Pick up the rifle with the cartridges and go to the firing line. The sniper rifle bullet has strong killing power and the rifle itself is good for long distances. This weapon has a precision shot mode. To use this mode, click on the sight icon or, if using direct control, position and hold the mouse cursor over the target. A sight indicator will appear. The longer you hold your aim, the more accurate your shot will be. Take your position at the firing line and hit the remaining targets. Some targets are too far away and direct control mode is required to hit them. To do so, hold down the control key or just press the end key. In this mode, position the mouse cursor over the target and left click on it to take a shot. Oh, that's what it means by direct control. I thought it was like, suddenly it's an FPS. Another target there that I'm not seeing? Oh, right there. Good job. It's time to move on. But for this, you need to get over a brick wall. If you blow up the nearby fuel truck, it's possible that the blast wave may destroy part of the wall. Near the observation platform, there are a couple of boxes. Take a grenade launcher and ammo. You mean these boxes that I can't do anything with? Oh god, how do I rotate? Can I not rotate the camera back? Oh, there we go. Uh, grenade launcher, grenade launcher. Now I can open the boxes. All right, so let's take this pan. Uh, they say, did Russians have bazookas at the time? Because I was gonna say Panzer Shrek. That would be Germans, obviously. I don't know what the Russian equivalent would have been. What their AT was. I mean, they had the big PPSH, or not PPSH, PTRD, anti-tank rifles at the time. And let's dump that back in there. Take a bunch of rockets. A bazooka rocket launcher has been specifically developed by our best weapon designers to fight against enemy armored vehicles. The bazooka is most efficient at short to medium distances. Although the shooting distance doesn't affect the armor piercing capability of its hollow charge grenade, it's not easy to hit a target long distance. We've got to break this wall! Get rid of those vehicles. Now hit the enemy's armored vehicles with anti-tank grenades. Go to the pile of boxes and pick up a couple of grenades. Of course, even without someone in them, the front armor is still the strongest on Panzers. No, don't take cover. Open the box. Anti-tank grenades explode when hitting the target and are quite efficient against enemy vehicles. To use a grenade, just click on its icon in the secondary armament screen and select it. You can shift between the primary and secondary armament screen by right-clicking. Position the mouse cursor over the target, the most vulnerable part of the tank is its engine, whereas hitting the thick frontal armor is usually less efficient. This should be taken into account when fighting against enemy armored vehicles. Now, destroy the next target. Not bad! Run to the next box! 
Whatever you say, Yakov Dmitriev. Anti-personnel grenades are used to damage enemy personnel. Unlike anti-tank grenades, they detonate a short time after the safety pin is removed. Use anti-personnel grenades to hit the targets. Wow, that was uh, painfully ineffective. You guys are the worst. Maybe I'll try throwing it between them. So it hit the one that was farther away, but not the one right next to the grenade. Okay. That's how shrapnel works. Hold on a sec, let me just take a bunch more grenades. Uh, where is the last target? I'm like trying to look at the mini map and figure out where it is on here. Because I am not seeing it. Oh, is that it? Yes it is. They're really hard to see. Because they're so thin. The targets have been hit. Now. Go to the final shooting range, come up to the boxes, and take the weapons, cartridges, and a couple of anti-tank and anti-personnel grenades. It will be hard for you to operate only one unit in combat. You will most often have a group of several soldiers at your command. It's now time to form your group. You can add soldiers to the group or exclude them from it. To do so, left-click on any of your units while holding down the sh- When a group is formed, its commander is automatically appointed. He is marked in yellow. When selecting him, the whole group is automatically taken under control. Now, order the commander to take cover behind the open container. Good. You can see that a group will follow its commander. If you order a commander to take cover, every member of the group will try to find cover. To change commander, select any soldier of the group and double click on him or press the K key. To dissolve the group, select the commander and press Shift and K. The commander will then become a common soldier. Now, transfer the group's command to another soldier. Your group must now destroy the enemy vehicles and the remaining targets. Take a look at the mini-map. The targets will be shown in red. Use the weapons at your discretion. You'll need good combat skills here. All right, good now luck. we're going to have to actually use what we've learned. All right, where's uh, Smirnov? You're our commander because you're our guy that we were controlling. Move on, men. We have to get rid of that. The commands for controlling the group are shown on the front panel. The first is, throw an anti-personnel grenade. If you click on this icon in the group control mode, and then select a target, one of the members of the group will throw his grenade to the place specified. If you double click on the icon, every member of the group with anti-personnel grenades will choose a priority target and hit it. The command, throw an anti-tank grenade, works in a similar way. Try to hit the targets with grenades. It's nice that you don't have to specifically select the guy in the squad you want to throw it, because uh, that's how like Dawn of War and stuff does it, and it's kind of annoying to have to switch to them without just having everyone use that same skill. Wow, it's faster just to fucking shoot it, because holy shit, these grenades suck. <laughs> Seems like they'll kind of throw grenades on their own. Nice. 
rocket launcher. When using the sniper shot command, the sniper within the group will hit the target using his capacities as a sniper. The command the group shot works in a similar way. Try these commands to hit targets and vehicles. I don't think anyone actually has a sniper rifle. There aren't many left. We've got to destroy the vehicles. If your group is attacked by multiple enemies, it's a good idea to use the suppressive fire command. Here you need to click on the relevant icon and specify the target. In this case, your entire group will focus suppressive fire on this target. Try I mean, this on a large group of targets near the edge. They seem to know how to switch, you know, firing modes and stuff well enough without you telling them constantly. Nice shooting. Using the group control button will be able to operate your group in a quick, efficient manner, rather than having the distraction of moving individual soldiers. You successfully hit the targets. Now, head. To it's clear. Let's go. It's a pretty elaborate training mission. How do we lose somebody? Come on, men. They're waiting for us at the station. What happened to you? Why will you not dismount? There we go. Left somebody behind. Come on, double time it. Where is the other guy again? Are you not part of my group? Is that the problem? Objective? Good job, soldiers. You had a good command of the weapons and found your bearings well. The supervisor from the intelligence department at General Headquarters has insisted that I send you to Colonel Stalinov. He's looking for people like you for his units. Why is this his commander so British? His men will master any vehicle, carry out secret operations in the enemy rear, and you'll be generally prepared for working within the recon units. Of course, there is one other option. You could get on the train and go to the gathering point immediately. This would bring you straight to the front line. But I would advise you to take a chance at being reached. Shut up, so old wait. man. We were told to join your group. To add ally units to your group, click on the call an ally icon and then click on the unit you want to add. Double clicking on this icon will summon a random available soldier. To mount a vehicle, position the mouse cursor over it, an arrow icon will appear and click on it. Now, Add the men to your group and get into the vehicle. I, I can't, I guess? Call ally? Nope, they don't want to be called. Grab him. And grab him. And can I kidnap this guy? No, I can't. All right. Let's just get straight in the truck. Let's get all these guys killed before we finish here. And uh, hopefully... We'll learn something. Everyone's here! Let's go!
My test is over. Major Moroccan thanked us and informed us that comrades from the Central Committee were very happy with the results. I should think so. We didn't spend hours mastering com- I thought this truck was supposed to take us right to the front line. Near to us, at a tank testing ground at Kubinka, they've been driving a new machine for more than a month now. It's top secret. We're not supposed to know about it. But tank men can't keep this kind of secret from colleagues. And Attention! This is Colonel Stalinov speaking. Welcome to the tank troops. I'd like to remind you that your key mission is to bring the column with our newly designed IS-2 tank to the shooting range for further testing. You'll get further instructions upon your arrival. Move to the shooting range along the road to a canyon. To do so, select your tank that's in the center of the column by left clicking on it and then click on where you want it to go. You can use direct control mode. Control mode. In this mode, use the arrow keys to move, left click to shoot, right click to shift between columns. Now, off to the shooting range. Commander, our right track has fallen off. The 101 crew wasn't so lucky. I bet a dozen mechanics couldn't fix the tank in one day. Shit, this landslide sure is gonna cost our army a lot. Okay, to get out of a vehicle, click on the Make the Crew Get Out icon on the front panel. An arrow icon will appear, and then specify the landing place by left-clicking on it. Now, go up to the tank and take a repair kit. To do so, select your soldier, then click on the View icon or press the X key an eye icon will appear. After that, left click on the tank and transfer the repair kit to your back. Click on the repair icon. A wrench icon will appear. And then click on the tank you want to repair. Once the repair is complete, the repair kit will be automatically transferred back into the tank. In the future, you'll be able to repair vehicles by merely clicking on the repair icon. Your soldiers will automatically carry out all the operations. Now, repair your tank. Wait, how do I actually repair it? I didn't see what it said I had to do to get the repair icon. Alright, I've taken the kit out. Nope, that's not what you're supposed to do, silly man. Hmm. Alright, so the thing that I missed is that there's actually other tabs on the uh, commands down here. So we can go repair, repair. The problem with the track has been fixed. You can move on. Order your people to get into the tank and make the 101 crew take seats on the armor. To do so, select them and click on your tank. After that, go to the shooting ground. No, I don't want to control the tank. These guys get up there. It's kind of neat that they can actually sit on the outside. Oh god, you really can manually drive this with the arrow keys. Just 
kind of awkward because you have to hold down control at the same time and use the mouse to aim and use Here the arrow keys back. to steer. The first thing to do is refuel the tank. You run out of fuel. There are a couple of empty barrels near the fuel truck. Click on your soldier and position the mouse cursor over one of them. The hand icon will appear. Then left click on the barrel. Here we are at last. The first thing to do is refuel the tank. You've run out of fuel. You already said there that. There are a couple of empty barrels near the fuel truck. Click on your soldier and position the mouse cursor over one of them. A hand icon will appear. Then left click on the barrel. Now position the mouse cursor over the fuel truck. A drop icon will appear. And then click on it to have your soldier drain some fuel from the fuel tank into the barrel. After that, simply left click on your tank to refuel it. I wonder if this is something we're going to have to do on a regular basis in the main game. Like, ah, oh shit, we gotta stop and refuel. Which is kind of neat. I, I like this sort of inventory squad management stuff. Great! The tank's been refueled. We won't need the barrel any longer, so put it on the ground. To do so, click on the drop icon or press the D key. Now it's time to replenish the ammo. Look into the truck. There should be everything that's needed there. Drag the shells and machine gun cartridges from the truck into your inventory. Then come up to your tank and transfer the ammo into it using the X key. Replenish the machine gun cartridge belts as well as armor piercing and high explosive shells. No, don't get in. Stop. The squad stuff's a little annoying. Just because you can't directly control them without removing them from squad. God damn it. Everybody get out of the tank. Which one of them had the, uh, the fucking shells now? This guy. Come on. Why do you only carry five of those at once? Attention soldiers! We've just received new instructions from Colonel Star. Bring our new ZIS-3 gun to the firing line to take a couple of shots. Knowing how to operate cannons won't do you any harm. You should be prepared for anything during a war. Order the soldiers to a get wire. into the vehicle with the gun attached. To do so, position the mouse cursor over it, an arrow icon will appear, and left click on it. Well, I think that's enough tutorialing. I was kind of hoping we'd get to some actual combat, but... Uh, it is an RTS, and a strategy kind of squad-based RTS at that, so... Maybe, uh, wishful thinking. So instead, we're just gonna do this. Wow. <laughs> no effect at all. Alright, how do you fancy this, then? To be operated to maximum efficiency on the battlefield, the tank group, well, what can I say for myself? There's nothing to say, really. 
Yes, I failed the tests. My fault. I didn't earn their confidence. Now I suppose everyone will be court-martialed because of me. Everyone will be court-martialed, but I'll be sentenced to death by shooting. Can't stop the rock. Oh, I think I blew up my own treads when I did that. Maybe they just won't let me drive away because I, uh, killed somebody. And for the climax. Wow, that thing's pretty tough. Alright, well that'll do it for Faces of War. It's uh, available on Steam now. I don't remember the price, but I will say it's less than 20 it seems uh, alright, kind of janky, as you'd expect from a European game, but uh, not terrible or anything. Kind of interesting. Where do you think you're going? So, uh, I've been Shadefire, and this is Faces of War, and y'all take care now. And hope that someone like me is never your commander. <laughs>